I just passed the infamous Spanish C2 exam. I'm actually going to pick up the diploma right now, so I'll take you along with me to see it and tell you exactly how I passed the test for anyone who's taking it in Spanish or in another language. Vámonos! So here are some interesting facts about the Spanish C2 exam. It's run by an institute in Spain, is globally recognized, and is considered one of the highest Spanish certifications in the world. The test lasts almost five hours and has three parts that test your reading, listening, vocab, essay writing, debate and conversation skills, formal and informal Spanish. It's supposed to be the closest thing to a full test of your entire Spanish skill set, and it tries to measure at near native fluency. Now, no test is perfect. It doesn't test things like slang, for example, and you can have a good or a bad test day, but I found that the C2 was a great way for me to measure my progress in Spanish and give me concrete ways to improve since it can get harder to know what to study as you get better. Now, if the exam sounds scary, don't be nervous. I was nervous to take the C2 as well and I almost backed out of it at the last minute, but I ended up taking it and I'm super happy that I did. Felt really good about the exam even before knowing my results, just from the sheer amount of stuff that you learn while preparing for the test. So pass or not, I think the C2 was a great idea and helped me learn a lot and improve my Spanish a ton. But how do you know you're ready for for the C2. When I decided to take the C2, I had no idea what my Spanish level was. I just knew that I loved the language and I wanted to know it as well as any native speaker. So part of it was just me picking out the highest, most ambitious level there was and deciding that this is where I wanted to be. And the other part was practical. For the practical part, I just looked up daily C2 and found a Spanish teacher that's familiar with the exam. And I just asked her to run a full simulation for me just to see how far off I was. I split the exam over multiple weekends to make the five hours more manageable. And I answered all the questions, readings, and essays. And then I asked my Spanish teacher to grade me. She said that had it been a real exam, I probably probably would not have made it, but I would be just about on the fence for all the sections. But for me, that's all I needed to hear. I just wanted to know there was a chance. So I went all in and I made a plan to study over the next nine months or so to beat that test. This is the system that I used. Based on the exam simulation, I knew that I needed to work on all the sections, but writing, vocabulary, and speaking needed the most help. For vocab, my bread and butter was this book. Vocabulary is not just important for the vocab section, but it also helps with the writing, listening, reading, and speaking parts. So on most days at home and on this very train ride to and from work, I would sit right here and work on the book section by section. I'd first learn and translate the vocab using Spanish dict, and then I'd go through the questions in the book and check the answers right after to make sure I was reinforcing the right things. I did a little bit at a time, but tried to close out one chapter in the book every week. I wasn't perfect and missed some days, but by the time I took the exam, I got to around page 94, which is about halfway through the book. The next thing I did was my one minute stories. I basically wrote little short stories using the new words I was learning as a light and fun way to remember these words and also to warm myself up to writing long essays for the test. I would challenge myself to write a one minute long story using at least five to 10 new words from the book. And I actually ended up publishing a few of these one minute stories on a playlist in my channel. Looking back, I do think this was a good idea. I have a strong memory of the new words that I ended up using in my one minute stories. Words like contrincante, batuta, and taquillera. Words that you might not come across in your day to day, but are nice to know. These words are now ingrained super strongly in my mind. So I think the stories was a good tactic to retain the words that I wanted to remember in the long term. So that's vocab. Now here's what I did to tackle writing head on. Apart from the one minute stories, I spent around three months doing this. Each week I'd pick a topic and try to write anywhere between 100 to 450 words on it. And I'd time myself to try and go at 200 words per 10 minutes to prep for the long essays in the C2 exam. I would then take these essays to my Spanish teacher every weekend and we'd improve them live in class, fixing vocab, improving the sentence structures, and making it less repetitive and fixing punctuation. At one point, we did a class entirely on punctuations, which are done a little bit differently in Spanish. So by the end of each class, I'd have anywhere between one to three corrected essays, and I'd pick a new topic to write even better essays for the next class. So that's writing, but here's what I did for speaking. I mostly covered speaking through the weekend classes I had with my Spanish teacher. Whenever we'd meet, we'd only speak in Spanish the entire class, so I got a lot of practice in that way. About a month after the test date, I started doing two other things. I kicked off 10-minute monologues. I'd go to Español Avanzado and choose a random article to find a topic that I don't usually talk about. Then I'd read up a bit on the topic and I'd put 10 minutes on the clock and speak non-stop for all 10 minutes in presentation style. I pretended as if I was giving a formal speech up on stage to a live audience. The second thing I did was spend dedicated time watching speeches on YouTube to get better at understanding how Spanish is used in formal and presentation style. Settings. I watched a few speeches from this channel about psychology, music, and a few other topics. For the videos that I really liked, I would watch them over and over again and at one point would even start to recite using the transcript along with the video to get used to that style of speaking. Está vinculada estrechamente con la respuesta a la pregunta. With my weak points covered, I had listening and reading left. For listening, I mostly kept watching Netflix and YouTube shows in Spanish, 
and for both, I started taking practice tests around three months before the actual exam. This book was my bread and butter, and I went through all of it. I'd do all the sections at home solo, and then on the weekend, I'd meet with my Spanish teacher to correct everything and do the speaking parts live. And I made sure to time everything. My goal was to always finish with at least 10 minutes to spare in each section, because I knew that during the actual exam, my nerves would get to me and likely make me slower. But I didn't end up getting to this speed until the very last month before the test. In that last month, I took two full practice tests, but I took them in one sitting to start preparing myself for the five hours that I'd have to take on the actual exam. And then it was test day. The Instituto Cervantes building is actually right down there where you see the Spanish flag. This is where I came one early weekend morning in New York City to take the C2 exam. I still remember it. I walked in, signed in, and then went upstairs to go take the exam. The first two parts I took in a room with maybe 10 other students. The first of the three parts almost went smoothly, but I remember accidentally skipping a question in the answer book, so I had to scramble and try to fix everything in the last 30 seconds since each part is timed separately. So I might have lost some points in that scramble, and then this threw me off for the second part, the writing, and my writing just felt clunkier than usual, but I ended up making it through all three essays on time. Thankfully, we got to take a break after part two, so I used that time to walk outside, clear my head, hype myself up again, and then go back Back in fresh and ready to go for the third part, the speaking. When I went in for the speaking test, I felt cool-headed and ready. This part was in a private room with just you, the exam person, and someone taking notes. I got a topic related to something about the gig economy and government. The examiner and I were going back and forth debating, and I quickly hit this flow where I almost forgot that I was speaking in another language, and I even got the examiner to laugh a couple of times, which was a nice touch. After that, I picked up my things, called it a wrap, and then head home and waited for the results. All right, let's go get that diploma. Whether you're taking this or another language exam, you've got this. And the process of studying and gaining all that knowledge was so much more valuable to me than the test results. I'll link the video where I showed my exact test results letter, all the scores, and a breakdown of the test for anyone thinking about taking the Spanish C2. Go crush the exam, and hasta la próxima.